I have a carrier infinity furnace, which is 80,000 BTU. The model number is 58 MVC 080. So I had uh, our basement was flooded uh, up to seven feet of water. And so everything was underwater and the furnace was not working. So I decided to fix it myself uh, because none of those warranties, the 10 year warranty, this is uh, this was installed in 2012. So it's still under warranty, 10 year warranty to now it's 2019. So seven years, eight years old furnace um, because of the water damage, none of the warranty uh, will be uh, applicable. So uh, it will void the warranty. I spoke to the the uh, HVAC uh, carrier uh, um, uh, dealership and they said it's it's again a little bit of problem because if carrier sees the parts were underwater, it will uh, not uh, honor the warranty. So um, the error code I was getting uh, was uh, 42. So uh, what I did was I printed out the error code for status 42 and you can find it on online and they have a diagnostic code um, or diagnostic troubleshooting uh, uh, document there. So the status code 42 for this uh, asks you to turn the shut off the power and um, I have to jump the um, or so remove the R thermostat leads and jump the um, number three is is R and WW1 thermostat. So if you see there is the R terminal right there, you can see this is this is the R and this is the W and W1. Um, so what I did was I used a jumper like this. Uh, you can use any wire. Just make sure that um, this is uh, connected to these two terminals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the power and do its diagnostics. So I'm going to turn on the power here. And you will see that it's the light is blinking and uh, I will let it run its diagnostics on that particular troubleshooting step. It looks like it turned the blower on. And while it's doing it, you can see that this document does have some good instructions in it. And so I'm on step three here and it goes to next is four. Observe the operation of the furnace for the next eight minutes or until fault occurs. So it's still blinking, which is it's still in diagnostic mode. And then at step five is going to be, we have to see if the status code 42 comes back. It turned off the blower and let's see if any error code comes up. As you can see, this panel has been underwater and a lot of dirt got into it. So, so here is the error code again. One, two, three, four flashes, and then one and two. One, two, three, four, one and two. So it's 42 again. So what I'm going to do is I'll remove the, the next step uh, requires me to, to uh, test the, uh, the connections here, which are 
P24 and L2 on the variable speed motor because I still have the, um, the inducer motor also didn't turn on. And so I'm going to do P24, PL24 and L2, and then I'll try to clean up. So I'm going to remove this board from this here so it's easy to, to so there is a, a, a screw over here. So I removed it partially, and then there is a screw over here which takes out this portion. So, so 42 is the inducer motor not coming on. And uh, I was not sure whether the inducer motor is bad or the circuit board was bad. So I did replace the circuit board. It didn't change anything. So the inducer motor was bad. And I looked up online, uh, the new inducer motors have changed the design. The carrier has changed these designs. And it also has these three presser uh, switches. And the new uh, version of the model of those uh, inducer motors um, have a different uh, uh, outlay or, you know, these will not fit underneath it. So they have a different way of putting these uh, uh, pressure switches. So I went online and I found a used one, which is this one. Um, and uh, I took the numbers from here and you can search online. I found it on eBay. They have taken it off uh, another machine and uh, I, I contacted the seller and said that uh, it is working. This was not the problem. They had the blower problem. So fortunately my blower was working. So I uh, didn't have to spend a lot of money on the blower because those, those blowers can be bad uh, as well with water and they cost quite a bit of money. So uh, this video is to show you how I replaced this inducer motor. And this is the one that came out of my machine. So it's very easy actually. You have to take off this bolt right here. One, there is one right here, two. And then um, you will have two bolts underneath. You can see this one, this bolt right there. And there is one here. Uh, you can see that one. So those four bolts will remove, and I will show you how the housing is. So here are the two bolts, and here is one, and here is one. So four bolts, and this whole unit will come apart. So this housing um, has the inducer motor in here, and this is the fan. If you want to see how the fan works, so the fan is... The motor, I, I'm pretty sure the motor is still good. If I can replace uh, the the control board in there. So this one has a blue control board, you can see. Um, and this was manufactured in 2011, it looks like. So once you, if you get a replacement part, you can also look at when it was manufactured. This was manufactured in 2009. Um, but it also has a green control board. So this control board probably went bad with water. And um, you can replace the whole unit because it's it's not worth uh, taking apart the control board. I couldn't find the control board itself for these motors. But since this one on eBay was only $100 and I paid $22 for shipping. So for $122 and I asked the person if he can... Um, give me these three pressure switches as well. So he agreed to it because this were the, the whole unit was in the picture. And so I got the pressure switches. My old pressure switches were also under water. And here is the, is the old one. It's still dripping water, you can see. So um, I can probably clean it. These pressure switches don't go bad. Usually um, if you clean it, I have to take it apart. So there are some screws in here. But since I got these pressure switches, all and the inducer motor for hundred dollars. I replaced this and it works fine. And before I put this on, I disconnected. There's a little clip in the back, and you can disconnect, pull this apart. Also, you can check the power or the voltage on these. So these two leads, the black and the white, will give you hundred hundred and twenty volts. So uh, if it's close to hundred and sixteen, seventeen, that's good. And then these two should have some voltage to it, which is either six amps, uh, not six amps, but six volts to 24 volts, something. But I was not sure because these are the ECM motors and I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, 
the circuit board went bad on this one because the motor still was good. And the other thing you want to do is rotate the fan. And if it rotates without making any noise or as, as long there is no obstruction in there, um, sometimes it gets stuck because you don't use it all summer and then you come back in the fall and that motor sometimes gets stuck. So just run it and uh, free it up if there is it is uh, jammed. But usually if that happens, you probably need a new inducer motor. So um, if you are planning to change it, um, so this is a Gentech motor and now this one is a GE motor. So GE um, was, these GE ECM motors were bought by Gentech. So this one being my, the one I had was a little newer. So they have the Gentech motors and then you can look at the number on this one. I will put it on the video as well. If you have this type of furnace, uh, I would suggest get a, um, the full replacement of the this part and it will go in fine. So you also have to disconnect these two pipes. So this one and this one is fine. Um, and then make sure that this one is plugged. So in my case, it came with it. And if you want to take apart the the fan as I did, these are the screws to take apart the fan to clean up anything. So if you want to see how it looks, that's the that's the part of the fan. And those screws actually hold it right here. So there are a bunch of screws in there. But also they are, they have a, a kind of um, a caulking in here. So they are sealed. So I didn't want to break the seals and it came together with that. So I didn't take this apart. So hope that helps uh, to fix your uh, uh, inducer motor in a carrier infinity furnace. If you want to see how I fixed my whole furnace, you can look at my other videos. I have put uh, together all the things that I changed on this furnace and it's working fine now. And I had to change the gas valve. So there is a video for the gas valve and also uh, the whole process and running it, how uh, this works. Hope it helps and uh, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I will uh, continue with the uh, other videos for my other machine, which was also underwater. It's a trained uh, American Standard uh, furnace, and uh, I still am waiting for a part for it. For it also needs the gas valve, so that will that video will come soon.